Hello everyone, it's Ashley at This Game Where with episode 6 of our Building Chester Zoo series. Everything that we're going to be doing in this video is in front of us. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute though, but first I'd like to just say thank you to everyone that has been watching the videos, especially those people that have subscribed. If you haven't, click subscribe already, that would be awesome. You'll, you'll get updates on when videos go out. Also, if you are liking what we're making, please do press like because that really helps us out. That, that gets people seeing our videos that wouldn't necessarily have seen them otherwise. So everything, as I said, that we will be t tackling in this video is in front of us. There are five things it breaks down to, really. The first one, the biggest one, is this area here, which is the uh, Euro European Black Vulture Aviary. That, I've already mapped out the space that it takes up. This is it, this is the frame for it, so uh, I'll be building within this. It's got a net over the top and I've got to figure out how to do that, but that's part of, uh, of the process. The second part of that, of this build, will be the gardens. So there's a garden somewhere around here. This is what I think is the Dormouse Garden, which went in 2018. Then there's the Andes Garden, which sort of strides this path here. And then there's a little bridge that goes along here looks quite nice the third part is the bridge may have a name I've forgotten to check if this bridge has a name but this bridge here obviously it looks pretty spare pretty desolate doesn't really look like a, a real world bridge to me so we've got to fix that we've got to make sure that that looks as close to what it does in the real world as possible the fourth thing that we'll be doing is working down from the bridge down this area. This is called Flag Lane and it's a bridle way that runs through the middle of Chester Zoo from one end to the other, splits it in half, which is why the bridge exists. We've got to make sure that that looks natural and as close to what it looks like in the, in the real world as possible. The only difficulty that I've got is that I haven't actually walked down Flag Lane, so I don't know <laughs> exactly what it looks like, especially from here on. So my plan is to sort of plant it up and make it quite quite bushy and dense so that you wouldn't be able to get through. I'm sure that they've got something better than that <laughs> in the actual zoo to keep people from entering the zoo without going through the entrance. But we'll, we'll find that out when we can eventually get to the... Well, when I can eventually get to the zoo. Uh, the last thing that we'll be doing for this, so the fifth of five things, is this area here. It's going to be a... It's a secret little surprise that I'm going to leave till the end of the video because it's quite an interesting thing and it's something that I have found out in doing the research for this build. So yeah, stay tuned for that. We're going to get stuck into the build now. Like, subscribe, see you in a minute. This build has been quite uh, a different experience really to the previous ones, the previous five videos, because I've, I've been working primarily on areas that are quite easy to... Uh, find images of. For the most part, the rhinos weren't quite so easy, but for the most part it's been easy enough to figure out what's going on in an area using Google Maps, using images available through YouTube or, or Google or on Zoo Chat or something like that. This area, for some reason, lacks those things and it's it's a lot more difficult to find pictures of the black Euro uh, European black vultures or even the condors that were in this area before the, the vultures uh, and even especially things like the gardens so on the, and the Andes garden the Dormouse garden that are next to this enclosure not not brilliantly easy to find anything like that so it, I've been left to my own devices had to problem solve a lot had to figure out how to do things and this is the first of those things so this is the netting that goes over the European black vulture aviary in the get in the actual zoo the netting is very fine black mesh that you can see through quite easily but the game doesn't have anything like that that I could use to replicate the the net so I, I settled upon after sort of fig, fiddling around with a couple of ideas I settled upon this lattice they call it but I would call it a trellis uh, I think that the actual material is wood but um, I think it's sufficiently close to looking like rope that I, I felt that it could pass for a net and certainly when you're not as close up to it as that uh, it does I think especially when I've tied it in made it look like it's tied together with ropes as well the 
the initial idea, and I'm about to abandon it in the video, I think, uh, but the initial idea was to make it look like it's draped over this central metal structure and use the shape of it to, to give the sense of it being material rather than wooden. Um, that didn't work, or fabric rather than wooden. That didn't work, and that's why I've placed it to the side there. I'll show you. I'll show you a little bit more uh, later on when I walk you around this area. But I had to abandon it. It wasn't working out. I went instead for the idea of reshaping the barrier, the mat, the chain link fence around the edge, and using that to create the shape of the net that I wanted. So in the in the real zoo, it's not a drapey. Uh, loose net it's quite taut and that's what I I, I decided to go for the drapiness the the draped over look to try and make it look like material but actually pulling it taut like this made it a lot easier to accomplish so um, the next the next I don't know how long to be honest but I'm now creating the shape of this net using the edge of the barrier the enclosure and what I realized is I was pulling them, dragging each piece over the, over the net, is that actually working with single pieces wasn't giving me the effect that I wanted. I wanted a tighter net structure, so I overlaid a, one piece over another, but a slight offset, and that created this much closer netting, and I really liked the effect of that. I, I hope you agree that it's quite effective in creating a net, a sense of a net, and then as I said before, combining it with ropes at certain points around around where I thought the joints would be made it look like more of something that you might find in the real world something that has been created especially for this enclosure to keep to keep the birds in now that element that that portion of the net this portion last portion of the net then was quite easy uh, in the end to once I'd figured out how I wanted to do it and then this end of it isn't quite so straightforward because I was no I knew full well that I was going to have to make everything meet in quite a strange way make, it, this has got corners and I wasn't sure how I was going to create this net with the materials that I had the the tools that I had which are these squared off lattice pieces and make the corners as tidy as possible so I had a bit of a mess around with that as well. It took took a, a fair while actually off camera to, to try and figure out. And I, what you saw me doing there was trying to disguise those that meeting point with some rope pieces. It, it didn't work, so I took it out and did the best that I could. I'm what I'm banking on is that you're not really going to have any need to go up into that corner. So where the rope doesn't quite meet as well as any uh, as well as it does elsewhere, you're not going to focus on that. Certainly viewers, people that are in the zoo, visitors, they aren't going to be looking in the corners up there, they're going to be looking down at eye level for the most part. I was quite pleased with how that corner worked out, because I was anticipating it being quite a difficult process, but I happened upon just making the two corners, the two edges of the material meet at the top corner and then dragging everything down as you saw me do. That worked really well there, and far better than I expected it to. So I repeated the process on the other side, and it didn't go quite so well. Uh, I think I figured out why it didn't go so well, because I, I did it in two different directions, and then expected those those two sets of, of net to meet up, and they just didn't. So I had to rip it all out and do it again. Uh, but in the end... I ended up with something that I was quite pleased with. <laughs> Not yet, obviously. Uh, if you can see, if you can see that, it, yeah. Not yet, <laughs> and I give up. And I go. Actually, that was the end of a day. It was about four in the morning by that point. So I I stopped altogether and I went to bed. I had a think about it the next day. I did the bridge area and then I came back and, and finished off the net and figured out how how it would work. So the bridge. If you look at the if you look at the brickwork underneath the bridge in the real zoo, it's sort of a greyish brownish colour, and I couldn't quite get the perfect match to that, but I think I happened upon something that works reasonably well, matches up to what the real bridge has. And then on, off 
off the back of that, or on top of that even, where it was just a case of getting the shape right and boxing it in so that you couldn't see all the structural elements that are hidden now behind that wall. Um, getting that was the easiest part. This was this was probably the more challenging part. Getting something that would actually work as a fence and and be similar, if not the same, to the thing that they have in the zoo. In the in the real zoo, the top of the fence, and I, I'll show you this a little bit more when it's when everything's moving slowly and I'm walking around. But the top of the fence has a has a curve to it. So every uh, each of the bars is linked to the bar next to it by a curved piece of metal on the top. And the game obviously didn't have anything certainly that I could figure out how to accomplish that with. So what I went for instead was this um, alternating short, long, short, long. And I, I think with what I wanted, well, what I wanted ended up actually being what I and what I got. Um, it, it took a little, it didn't take that much thinking actually. I was going to say it took a little bit of thinking through and figuring out, but I was going to keep them all long and then I, I took just on a whim just to see what it looked like. I took one off next to it. I took some out so that it was long, short, long, short, and really liked it and stayed with it. So the only the only shortcoming is those sort of um, pla plates, the metal plates that are in between each piece of fence. I, I, I kind of like them, but I can imagine that that's something that other people might look at and go, oh, well, I'm not sure about that. But I like the way that they create a pattern along the fence. So I, I don't know, it's a personal preference thing for me at least that. The actual fencing, because the bridge was quite a pain in the backside to get positioned well and isn't a perfectly straight uh, path, as paths tend not to be, the fence was quite a pain in the backside to get fitted, to get sorted, because I had to work in single pieces rather than being able to copy and drag some, some pieces together. I wasn't really able to do that, so um, I had to do it piece by piece, which was fun. The <laughs> you might have just seen me. I emptied the zoo because people were getting on my nerves. They were getting in my way on the bridge, so I closed the zoo. The zoo is now closed, and it will be closed for the foreseeable future until everything is in place. Uh, this is now the building of the Andes Garden. So I am using the bamboo. I tried the I tried the wooden beams that I've had before there but I didn't really like the way they looked in comparison because so this is supposed to be quite a thin small fence and I didn't like the way they looked in comparison to the beams that were in front of the aviary so I swapped it out for the bamboo and I also feel that the bamboo works in so much as it ties it in if you've if you've watched the butterfly garden video it ties it into the bridge section of the inside of the butterfly house and when you look at the so there's a bridge out here as well. No, I don't mean the bridge that we've just separated. I mean through the Andes Garden, there is a bridge. And you'll see me build it soon. But that bridge has some design similarities to the bridge inside the Butterfly Garden. Ha uh, sorry, the Butterfly House. So in the real zoo, both of them have, the, uh, have these wrapped rope handrails. And in my zoo, I've used the bamboo to tie those two things together in the same way that the the real world zoo has done. Now, uh, I I just started I I started on the Andes Garden and then sort of flitted away to do a little bit of planting around the back of um, Flag Lane. And I'm back in the Andes Garden now, so I'm sort of a little bit behind and explaining everything that's going on. But uh, Flag Lane, you might have got a little glimpse of the surprise, the little secret that I am keeping till the very end when we do our walk around. But it was something that I've never, I didn't know about. I had to ask somebody that knows the zoo clearly very well because they were able to answer me within about 20 minutes, uh, no problem. And they were working just on the Google Maps that I that I sent them. I, I just said, "What is this structure?" And they they knew straight away. So uh, you will you will get to see that, and I'll explain what it is at the end towards the end of the tour that I'm going to give after the build is finished. This is the Andes Garden then. So the Andes Garden, as you can imagine from the from the name, is presumably populated with plants that specifically thrive in the Andes. We are quite short on those, as far as I know. So instead, I've I've tried to give a feel for the for the garden 
rather than get it perfect, perfectly correct, perfectly. Um, as, as cl it's as close to what it is in the real world as I can get it with in-game assets, is what I'm saying, really. So this is the bridge, as I was saying before. This is the bridge that I, I think is supposed to tie into the butterfly house, and I've used similar planks, but I've I've used ones that I can recolor inside. I use the water wheel ones, I think the water mill theme uh, planks. Whereas out here, I've used the painted planks, and that's for the reason that the the wood out here is quite weathered and worn, and I couldn't get that same. I didn't want it to look too pristine as the as the water wheel ones kind of look like they've never been used so i've recolored them to give this weathered wood look and then i'm going to i'm just putting in the bamboo pieces now to the bamboo piece around the edge to act as the handrail and they will be recolored as well they're actually i'm actually going to change them to the same color and to be honest i couldn't be happier frankly with the results of this bridge because it is very close to what I what I see in images of the zoo, of the real zoo. And I wasn't expecting to be able to get to that point, really, because of the pathing. The path, I really had to fiddle around, mess around, get it the right shape by deleting, re replacing different pieces of the path, because it meets up in uh, such a strange way. So that is the build. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm now going to show you around the zoo. Here it is, and here is the finished aviary and uh, surrounding area. Just give you a quick pan to the to the Andes garden, so you can see our little hidden gem in between the Andes garden and the aviary. I don't think we did. Uh, first things first. You want to have a look close up look at the netting so i said that I, I was quite pleased with it i'm still quite pleased with it i look at it um and it looks like a net to me so that's good i've got a couple of plants shooting out the top and i nearly very nearly changed that to, to stop me from doing it but i decided not to um i, I put a trim around the edge didn't say about the trim but i put a trim a, a wooden trim around the edge and i think Good to me. It looks even better at night time, so I'll actually I will show you the night time view. If we go inside, this is the inside. So there is a shed in the real in the real zoo, some kind of shed or building over there that I haven't touched. Maybe it's quite ramshackle anyway. I don't even know if it's still there anymore. One of the things that I forgot to point out was that I used drywall uh, pieces for the walls on either side of the bridge, and that makes up the inside wall of this as well and then on the back wall is this cliff like structure which is probably why it's called condor cliff but it's also got uh, these in recesses so I've got those in as well uh, nice few bushes in the corner there are there are rocks in this corner uh, varying sizes and instead of putting those in I decided to use them with a new pencil pieces to make it look a bit more interesting a bit more wobbly and it also tied in with this because like a stone wall that that goes into like the concrete or plaster wall on this side, or at least that I can figure out from the few bits that I've got. So I thought those two things tied in together quite nicely. There's also something that you wouldn't have been able to see from the build because for some reason I didn't capture the actual planting up of this area. Uh, you didn't see this, uh, which I built. It's I, I'm pretty pleased with it again. Like, it's the best water work that I've done. It's better than the elephant enclosure, the waterfall there, you'll have maybe, well you won't have seen it because you, won't, you haven't been around there, have you? Uh, that inspector is going to find me if, if I let this game run it still, but uh, we'll turn it off. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm actually recording this on GeForce Now to see what it's like, so, so if you can give me some comments on what you think for using GeForce Now, it might fluctuate in quality i don't know but anyway tell me what you think it, is this better or is it better the way that i was doing it before I, i'd like to know uh, obviously this is an aviary and we only have one set of birds in the game so i have populated it with our birds our peacocks and our pea hens our pea fowl as the as the game calls them 
I've never heard anyone anyone call them that, to be honest, outside of the game. Yeah, I said it looks better at night. And I will show you that now. So the reason it looks... I mean, I've lit it for a start. But one of the reasons it looks better at night is because it gives this translucent look to the upper area. And that's more the way that I expected... I wanted it to look. It looks like the kind of mesh mouth that you have in the actual game. So, yeah, in, in the nighttime, I'm very happy with it. In the daytime, I'm still pretty happy with it. Now, to give you an idea of what we went through, what we were trying, what what we were aiming for, well, you know what we're aiming for, we were aiming for what we've got, but uh, to give you an idea of what we tried in the process, I said I was going for that drapier element, and I tried to use these ropes to create some kind of ropey structure, and that just wouldn't work. I I had plans of tying it to some of these uh, lampposts. These are the New World lampposts, I think, and that didn't work either. Then uh, this was my draped, drapey section, so you can see it sort of undulates down there, but it, again, didn't work. So that was the saga of, of the netting. Now this is the bridge. You you got to see the bridge quite nicely, I think, actually, in in the video for the most part. I put in these, I don't know what you'd call them, but things. I need to turn one of them around because they don't match, do they? But uh, I'll turn one of those around and I'll, that'll be great. But this is the fence here. It's got up and downs, up and downs. So up, down, up, down, up, down, alternating. As I said in the in the build, but the real fence has these looped tops that go like that and if anyone can figure out a way to do those in the game please do let me know I'd, I'd like to know just for the technique um, but for now I'm quite happy with my fence as it is this then is flag lane you saw me putting a few bits in flag lane you saw how it was before there's actually a, a zookeeper's hut down there so I, one of the primary things is to hide that and there's also the path which you can only just see uh, down here, the zoo zookeeper's path thing. Uh, coming down the bridge, you've got walls on either side, nice thick walls made, I'm saying good old Yorkshire stone is what they're made of, though, you know, they might object in Cheshire, I don't know, it's not Yorkshire, so maybe they use their own stones, who knows? They, they know. <laughs> if anyone knows what sort of stone they use for their buildings, uh, let, me, let me know in the comments. <laughs> so, this is our third set third creation for this video this is the andy's garden so i gave you a little look at it uh in the in the build but it was in a quite a quick manner so if we just give it a quick uh, well not a quick a slower flyover the planting in this area is i think quite well done in the game and in terms of the way that it matches up to the what's in the in the actual zoo these are white flowers they're a bit too dense foli foliage wise but other than that i'm quite pleased with it i like the way that i've planted uh, placed the rocks as well i think that that really works the only thing that's unfortunate is that it's on the mulch the darker mulch and in the actual zoo it's got like white gravel but i couldn't find anything to make that work so um it is what it is and that is what it is and i i like what it's actually ended up being so so if you stand here in the zoo, both in the game and in the real world, you can see this sort of the top of this structure here. And I didn't know what this was, so I I actually went to a website called Zoo Chat. Uh, you might you might be here from Zoo Chat, you might not. If you're not, go and have a little read. There's lots of really interesting stuff on there. Um, I I put on a Google I put on a plea a, a request, just with a Google Map image from above as to what this structure was next to the aviary and Thomas not Tom and Shonen Jake were came to my rescue very quickly and identified it actually as uh, this okay so this is an enclosure this is an enclosure that you wouldn't see if you went to the zoo because it's off show and you're not allowed in here and the reason presumably that you're not allowed in here is because it's for the uh, Scottish wildcats or Highland tigers is another name for them and they are an extremely rare species they they look like almost like a house cat you, you could be forgiven for mistaking them for a house cat if you didn't know what you were looking at and their numbers in the wild go into or have dropped to the hundreds there there are 
not very many of them left at all. And actually, Chester Zoo's um, conservation program with the wild cats is is doing reasonably well. At, uh, I gather, in so much as they managed to have some kittens, or at least one kitten. I don't know if it was more than one kitten in the last few years, but certainly in the last couple of years, they've had at least one kitten to the uh, to the Scottish wildcats to the Scottish wildcats now in terms of the enclosure it's quite a spare enclosure in, in terms of what you might maybe expect when it's next to this giant aviary but then I think it's probably the the correct size for the wildcats and in terms of again I said in the video that in in terms of being able to get pictures of this I worked on this just from a single image it was a CCTV image which you can see it in a certain place in the zoo um, so it was it was sort of freeing I, I had the general shape rectangle <laughs> um, and patterning on the roof but other than that I had to just do what I thought might work um, and I'm actually quite pleased with with the results here as well so it, it's a win all round frankly on this build I've, I've packed a lot into the week <laughs> I've packed a lot into the video, four builds, uh, well, four areas that I wanted to get done and that I've got done. The only thing, this is Flag Lane, by the way, that I'm walking with now. Uh, the only thing that I'm a little bit disappointed with is this. So over here is supposed to be another garden, the Dormouse Garden. It was new in 2018. And unfortunately, that means that there aren't very many pictures I haven't seen it because I haven't been to the zoo since before 2018. Um, and so I've made the decision that until I can get to the zoo or until I can get some good pictures of it, I'm going to, I've, I've put foliage in to fill the gaps. To uh, I think this is as it was prior. It's certainly how it looked on Google Maps. But when I've got a better idea, when I've got some images or when I've been around the zoo myself again more re uh, soon, hopefully I will replace this I will put the dormouse garden in but other than that let's not end on a bum note other than that uh, aviary done wildcat enclosure done Andy's garden done flag lane done bridge done all to my satisfaction let me know what you think as well because I'd love to hear from you uh, if you let me know where you're coming from as well that would be that would be lovely if you're coming from zoo chat if you're coming from reddit pop a comment down below and I'll uh, I'll get back to you if you are enjoying these videos please do subscribe uh, and if you could like the video as well that would be awesome if you did like it of course and I will see you again in the next one